Hi, and thanks for joining me today. So I have a showcase of the latest mini album that I just finished. This one's actually going to my sister-in-law, so hopefully she's not watching this video, at least not before she actually gets it. <laughs> um, so I will try to link to, if I can find them, um, all the different products that I use to create this mini album. But there's a lot going on on the cover. It's actually more than I've ever kind of dressed up a cover before because I was really trying to go for uh, this more collage style of um, maybe not so much mixed media, although I would like to get into mixed media, but I was trying to go for like a vintage collage look and um, in particular was having a lot of fun with 3D flower uh, foam. And so let me just walk you through kind of the different elements. So I was kind of using this project as a little bit of a test bed for the different types of 3D foam that I have. And I've um, tested or played around with four different brands, but only three of them made it onto this cover because the other one that I tested out, um, it's just a lot thicker of a foam uh, than the rest of these three. And I wouldn't necessarily say that the end result is any better or worse, it's just a very different look. And um, I was going for something just a little bit more, a little bit more realistic. And I found that the thicker the foam, uh, the less realistic it, it ends up being. And it could also just be that um, because it was my first attempt at using that brand of foam that I haven't really figured out the right heat setting for it as well. Since it is a thicker foam, maybe it just requires um, a stronger heat. So I'll still play around with it. I haven't written off that brand, just didn't make it onto this project. So this first one is from, um, the foam is from Tonic Studios. And of the three different foams that are showcased here, it's actually the thickest, but it does seem to be the most pliable. So when you kind of stretch your foam around the ball tool, it uh, stretches really nicely um, and doesn't, doesn't tear um, or, or, or rip. So, and that one is, I think, from this die set, which is from Crafter's Companion. It's from their Garden of Love collection. And I actually have uh, three different, you know, kind of rose dies. And it's really surprising for me anyways, just, you know, to look at a shape and then see the, the end result from it. It's, um, I would not have predicted you know, that you could get that from this shape die, but that's what happens. So it's really nice. The tonic foam, I was only able to find it on craft stash and only in white. So I did have to color it a little bit and I used my Faber-Castell uh, gelatos to give it that just like a light sort of wash of yellow, which I think kind of makes it look a little bit more antique -y. And I was going as a reference um, for kind of these colors that are in her um, hat. The lighter pink here, this one is Crafter's Companion Foam and it's really nice. Um, it's thin, uh, but not the thinnest of, of these three. And it's actually the, the first um, foam I ever used because I picked up one of their monthly craft kits, which was centered around 3D flower forming. And they had um, a lot of, several sheets of foam included in that kit. And it was just so much fun for me that I knew I would be doing more of it. And so I wanted to buy different brands of foam just so that I can, you know, get a sense for, um, you know, what's out there and how they differ. And um, if there's like a clear winner to, to have a brand to kind of stick to. And um, I did color it a little bit. It's kind of slight, but there's a little bit of variation in color here. And I think I, again, used my um, uh, gelatos to do that coloring. And then I, I realized that I was trying to go for this crimson color uh, rose, but I actually don't have any foam that is that deep of a red. Um, the closest one that I had was actually the, the, of that fourth brand, and um, I just didn't really like the thickness of that foam. So what I did was I took um, 
this foam, which is from Sizzix, and the original kind of native color is this lighter um, pink that you can kind of see on the underside. And this, uh, the Sizzix foam is the, it's the um, thinnest out of these three. And it's actually, the end result, it's, it's just the most realistic when you, even to the touch. It's so thin and it's kind of got that silky um, uh, texture of a, of a rose. And really gorgeous how that turned out. But because um, I didn't have the right color, what I did was I actually just colored it with my alcohol markers. So I die cut the petals and then using my alcohol markers, all I did was just give it like a little bit of a wash of color. Like I used a mid-tone red and just did brush strokes, not all the way to the outer edge, but starting from the inside and, and flicking outwards. And then I went in with a deeper red um, on the edges and a little bit towards the center, just to give it a little bit of that variation. And uh, I think the end result just looks really super realistic and, and gorgeous. I loved it. And this was the first flower where I was um, using the technique where you create like a little bud in the center as opposed to using uh, stamens like these. And the stamens are from Crafter's Companion. So just really different looks, different um, uh, kind of, I guess, I don't know if I would necessarily say quality in terms of better or worse, it's just you end up with a with different looks and it just really depends on what you're going for, I guess. So um, I showed you the dye that resulted in this one. This was created from this die set, which is Crafter's Companion out of their vintage lace. So that die set results in that flower. And then the largest one, this was actually a die set that came in one of the Crafter's Companion mystery bags that I got. Gorgeous. And it's a really nice size. There's three different size um, petal dies. And you get a flower that looks like that. So really gorgeous. And for the little, um, for the foliage, this die set does have this leaf. I didn't use the stamp. The stamp is where all of the um, kind of interesting veins and texture come, but I die cut out of Tonic Studios specialty card. I think it's called Hessian. Um, so that gives it a little bit of texture, but um, this only has the one leaf die. So I did dig around my stash in the Vintage Lace collection, which I think they've put on like super duper clearance. Um, during their um, uh, craft vault that they've been doing recently. I don't know that it made it into the U.S. warehouse sale just um, this past weekend, but but um, it's definitely come up in bundled deals for, like, even lower than what I paid, and I, I bought it at a, a pretty deep discount. But anyway, so these, like, little vines um, that I have going up um, the side of the book and uh, around the frame. Those came out of um, this die set and what, there's one more. Oh, this die set. So from Simply Made Crafts, um, I do want to try the quilling style flowers but using instead of paper foam and seeing how that how that looks but not something that I tried this time around but I did take some of these um, floral foliage elements from this die set just to just to fill it out and and have different size shape of um, greenery and so that's that's all the flower floral elements for the frame here this was a mixed media die from die set I should say from tonic studios and it's again one of the ones that came in the mystery bag but one that I had been eyeing to, to get for myself. So I just I cut that out of some lightweight chipboard, um, gave it a layer of walnut stain distress inking, and then I um, gold foiled and used cosmic shimmer, um, uh, what do they call it? Is it a gold wax or paste? Um, polish, I think gold polish. 
and um, tried to give it that sort of distressed wood um, effect. And I experimented a little bit in this corner with um, this brass plate. So Sizzix has, um, it's been in their clearance section for a long time now. They have these small um, plates that are, that can emboss brass um, plates like this or brass tags. And this was the first time I was using it and it didn't get a super good impression. Um, so what I decided to do was just add a metal charm <laughs> over top of it. But the metal charm is actually silver. And so to give it that gold look, what I did was I just painted on some glycerin and then poured gold embossing powder over it and heat embossed. And so then you get the gold look and be careful if you ever do this with a metal charm. So I used um, some tweezers to hold the charm by this you know, little eyelet and um, because the metal will get really hot and it will stay hot slash warm for quite some time after you're done heat embossing. And um, I used that to my edge by once I was done with the first layer of heat embossing, I just put a little bit more powder over top and gave it like a second coating. And so that gave it more coverage. And then once everything was completely dried, I um, just sponge, you know, inked over it with some walnut stain um, distressing just to age it a little bit. So that's how I treated that that charm and this one as well, because both of them were both of them were silver to start. The little flowers came from my little birdie um, dollar deals haul that was um, I think it's ended now, but. I picked up a lot of different size and shape um, flowers, mostly on the small side, because I, I had a vision of using it just as I have here of just using it to kind of fill out the page where I could then focus more on creating the larger floral elements, but still um, be able to add some some smaller you know flowers, but not have to die cut and create all of these because I, I think I do probably have dies that will cut flowers maybe this small um, but I mean, it's just a lot of die cutting and um, and it's so convenient to just be able to have these ready made they are they are made from paper um, but I'm okay with that that just makes these um, these ones stand out even more because they are you know made from the foam they look a little bit more um, kind of realistic and obviously they pop out of the the page a lot more. I also have this key charm. This was already brass so I didn't have to do anything to kind of give it or change its finish and then the rest is just um, paper. So then heading into the book I did use the um, tonic um, die set that has the kind of inverted uh, corners and I usually will try to mimic that on my cover, but um, because I hand cut my covers to be a little bit larger than the pages so that the pages will nicely fit well within the cover, I was sort of flying in automatic and I didn't, <laughs> I forgot to, to replicate that little curve there. So you kind of lose the effect of the interesting um, shape of the page, but Oh well, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that now. Um, with this particular layout, it's really simple, but the motivation behind it is because the paper is so pretty that um, it felt like, at least if it were me and my album, I would feel like it, it would be so hard to kind of cover up the image with a photo. And um, so what I did was, Sort of as a compromise, I used this nested um, frame die from Tonic Studios and from this um, paper, from the matte layer here, I just cut out this frame, but I kept everything. So the inner aperture that's cut from this paper, I glued back onto the page base and um, the frame, I just popped up on some foam. 
to create some dimension and then I just backed it with some acetate so that she could slip a photo um, behind here but if she didn't you know she could still see the full image and her photo would still be framed but it would be framed by um, the background paper still so I thought that was a little bit different um, and then um, to make it so that she could create a photo that still has the same shape, I'm giving her this photo template, which is just a piece of vellum that I um, used a smaller, because this is a nested frame set. So I just used a smaller uh, shape within that set and I die cut vellum so that she could use this um, as a template and she can just trace it onto her photo and then cut her photo out and slip it into the frame so um so you know that's that's because i think it looks weird when you put something rectangular in i did try to put a rectangular piece of paper in there and it looks a little bit weird so i thought um and she's kind of crafty so i think this is something that she can manage to do um and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be all that hard most of my pages are pretty simple mo because i was <laughs> saving time to do the cover which took a little bit of a little bit of time but um on this layout i used the i think they just released it the half page set to just make some some flaps they're held down by magnets on the inside of the flap i did mount some photo corners um so that she could easily just slide in a um three by four photo so she doesn't have to you know, use any special adhesive or, or anything. She can just easily um, slip a photo in there. And then these are, I think, easier um, backgrounds to, to put a photo over. So I've given her some photo mats um, that already have adhesive on the back that she can kind of create whatever layout she wants because then she could do, if she wanted to do, um, you know, a four by six would fit on here. Um, two, I think two three by fours would fit and she could do portrait landscape however she wants and um, both pages are mirror images of each other so um, so she's got that then this um, page is exactly like the other one where it's just a little photo frame she can slip a photo behind there I've given her a pocket page where I've got some um, three by four photo mats for her and these again have the little photo corners that she can just slip a photo onto and then she can it's already got double-sided adhesive strips on the back she can just put it wherever she likes and then I also included for her just taking another die out of the memory book die set took the smallest one and just made her um, originally this was actually white and when I put it on the page it looks so so bright white that I decided to try to mimic the colors in this and the patterning, um, kind of that vintage -y patterns, um, to, to make it blend in a little bit better. But the idea is that these would be little caption tags, photo caption tags. So for example, if she wanted to um, put a layout together, she could slip her photo into one of these photo mats and then put a caption. Um, just you know, write a little caption for that photo and put that on onto the page as well. So I've given her um, sets of of uh, photo mats and little photo caption tags. So that's in there. And then she's got another pocket in, in case um, she has other memorabilia or anything that she would like to put on here. This page also mimics. Um, uh, the photo frame one and then this is a really simple just a little belly band and then a little um what did you call these it's just a card I guess but you know I again put some photo corners on the inside so that she can easily slip some photos onto this and um this you know two-page layout is all about like the butterflies and stuff really really pretty papers in this in this paper pad and um my uh I think I do this almost not as a rule but um pretty often I've been putting my water waterfall mechanisms 
onto the back cover because the back cover is, you know, that heavyweight chipboard and waterfalls are are generally like, you know, pretty um, substantial in terms of, you know, paper layers and, and weight. So here I have a little magnetic closure. So this is a little flap and I'm using a um, three quarter inch magnet here, which right now it's strong enough to hold all of this down, but I'm a little bit worried as to whether once she has photos placed um, onto these flaps, if, if this is still gonna be strong enough to hold. So I'm gonna just have to ask her and follow up with her <laughs> to see whether that's the case. Um, but I did um, uh, reply to, Jackie, if you're watching this video, this was the layout that uh, I was referring to. And I might, once I'm, once I'm done working through this um, batch of magnets, I might try to get either the Tonic Studios magnets or the Basic Gray magnets because those are kind of the two name brand magnets that I've heard other album makers use. Um, I'm just using a fairly affordable set that's off of Amazon. So, um, but basically the way the waterfall is, is you, that's the closure that keeps everything down. But I've, on the back of each of these flaps, I've um, put photo corners again, so she can just slip a photo behind there easily. She could also use the photo mats that I've provided to put a photo over top if she wanted. But I figured, you know, if she wanted to kind of preserve, you know, the aesthetic of the papers on the outside, but it's still at the end of the day a photo album, so um, I did want to give her some obvious locations for where she could put photos and then you just pull this um, tab at the bottom and that will flip through each of these flaps and if she wanted she could take like these photo tags and she could actually put for example a photo um, in the back of the flap and then she could put a caption tag um, on the front so this would be the caption for that photo and you'd still get you know the prettiness of all of this and plus once this is closed down you wouldn't see those little caption um, tags so I thought that that would be another fun thing that she could do another option for her I just want to keep things a little bit flexible for her but then at the same time um, I, I don't know if, if she's familiar with the style of album. Um, I wanted to strike that balance of having some really obvious places for how and where to place your photos, but still give her some flexibility to um, alter and kind of change the album so that it meets, you know, whatever story she's trying to tell with um, the collection of photos that she wants to put in here. And so, you know, hopefully she's got a good idea of where she can put some of the photos but then where she can also kind of do her own thing and make her own decisions for for um where and how she wants to place things because even this even this pocket is um large enough to to put a photo onto and so she could definitely do that as well so um I might uh, actually, before giving this to her, um, create a couple of 4x6 photo mats because right now I only have 3x4s um, created for her. But these, this two-page layout in particular is large enough for a 4x6. This page is large enough, this is the inside front cover, this is large enough for a 4x6 too, but that would cover everything. And um, a three by four would cover quite a lot of it too. Um, but it kind of depends on where you put it if um, and what you're willing to like sacrifice, I guess image right wise. But in my mind, if I ha if this were my album, I probably wouldn't put anything here to be honest. Um, but that's the why I have um, different areas for for where she can. Um, kind of put photos. Also, these um, words that are die cut out of um, these little page tabs, this came from an accessory 
kit. I think it's, um, oh, well, it's, it is from Tonic. I forget what it's called, but it's the one that has, um, the film strip and the dies that you can use to cut out the film strip, I think. Um, I think that's where those came from, but they're really nice as a, um, collection because they cut into your card and these two in particular combined basically reads, remember, you know, on this day. And so if there, if this was to commemorate or, you know, just, um, a memory book for maybe a specific trip, um, that, that she took, she could really, because this is a spread that, you know, she could actually fit quite a few photos on this spread. If she was using all three by fours, it, she'd get three on each side for a total of six photos. So if there was a particularly memorable day from a certain vacation or whatever that she wanted to, um, you know, encapsulate on, on this layout, then it would be, um, this would be a good spot for it because... Everywhere else, I think it's just like a photo here or there, and then the waterfall. So pretty, pretty simple album, but um, as I mentioned, a lot, a lot of my energy was put into the the collage uh, look and effect of the cover, and of course of the three D flower forming, which I love, love to do, and it's um, fun to just see the different outcomes based off of different foam and um, differently shaped dies. So I'll definitely be doing more. I have other dies um, that I've um, purchased that are for, um, in particular, 3D flower forming. And one experiment, as I mentioned, that I want to try out is um, these quilling style of um, flowers and using foam for them. So that's definitely one thing I want to try out and see if um, what the result looks like and if it turns out well. So um, thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you uh, enjoyed it, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. It just helps my channel um, get uh, out to a wider audience of other folks who might enjoy um, you know content that is similar. So. Thank you again, and until my next video, happy crafting, and have a fantastic day. Bye.